Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and on CoinPaprika.com it's looking like Ethereum is leading the way into the negative. Um, the post-merge, um, I wouldn't call it a crash, but a pullback in Ethereum, that's probably pretty easily predicted. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, although there is some news out that I'll show you. Now, this came out this morning right out of the gate from CNBC, the narrative carriers for the government. Okay, we got a news alert from Washington this morning. The Biden administration releasing a report on the government's role in digital assets. I want to get straight over to Elon Moy this morning, who's got the details on that. Elon. Well, Andrew, the White House is issuing the government's first comprehensive framework on digital assets. It says the goal here is to mitigate the downside risk of a volatile industry and harness the benefits where proven. Now, the Treasury Department, Commerce, the DOJ, and the White House all contributed to this effort. NEC Director Brian Deese told reporters, quote, without proper oversight, cryptocurrencies risk harming everyday Americans, financial stability, and our national security. Among the recommendations, the Fed should keep exploring a central bank digital currency, which the White House said could offer significant benefits. On climate, the Department of Energy and the EPA will consider tracking the environmental impact of crypto and... When you hear tracking, watch out. That means somebody wants to use this for the... I've said for a long time, this can go one of two ways. The bad way is the government uses this like China does to track you. The good way is that they appreciate a new technology, but make sure that in, there are in place privacy protection for, for citizens. Developing performance standards. There was also a big focus on illicit finance. The White House is weighing whether to ask Congress to amend the Bank Secrecy Act and other anti-money laundering laws to specifically reference digital assets. And Treasury will issue risk assessments of DeFi and NFTs in 2023. So this is the follow-up to the government-wide executive order that the White House had released back in March. The crypto industry worked closely with the administration back then. We'll see how it responds to what feels like a more skeptical tone today. Guys, you can think of today's release as the blueprint for regulation down the road. And the White House is making it clear that regulation is coming. We need to get half these people out. Um, now, this is Milton Friedman from the 80s. With all this inflation, listen to this man. He's one of the smartest people economically from history. Who are the constituencies that have benefited most from inflation? There are no doubt. It is the homeowners, but it's, yep. also the, it's also the congressmen who have been able to vote higher spending without having to vote higher taxes. They're, they have, in fact, right. Congress has, in fact, voted for inflation, but you have never had a congressman on record to, uh, to that effect. It's the government civil servants who have their own salaries are indexed and tied to, in, uh, tied to inflation. They have a retirement benefit, a retirement pe pension that's tied to inflation. They qualify a large fraction of them for Social Security as well, which is tied to inflation. So that the beneficiary... Labor contracts that, that are... And, not and, labor and contracts. pricing things that are But the one inflation. thing that isn't tied to inflation, and here I want to come back and ask why Congress has been so... so uh, uh, bad in this area, is it's our taxes. It has been impossible to get Congress to index the tax system so that you don't have the present effect where every... 1% increase in inflation pushes people up into higher brackets and forces them to pay higher taxes. You see how this works, folks? And do not forget, gold is money. Everything else is debt. Now, we've got digital assets coming in, and I believe that digital assets like XRP are going to... Um, I'm getting... Hey, everybody. Sorry I, I got interrupted by a phone call, but let me remind you, um, after we just watched that inflation clip, the link to Glint, who's one of my sponsors, in the, in the top of the description and click on it and tell them DAI sent you because uh, if I'm doing anything, I'm accumulating um, digital assets on the dip. I'm accumulating gold. I'm, I'm in my Glint account as well as physical gold. You can do that through them. You just have to contact them. And then um, other things, master artwork, different things. But I'm, I try to tell when, when I'm 
when I get to those things and I'm thinking about them, I try to tell you about them. Okay, here's um, a couple things from the charts. EGRAG, crypto, XRP, double fibs, plotting double fibs, overlapping each other, da, da, da. And then I like this, dig deep in the chart and examine um, this. My eyes are always on fib 1.618, seven to $33. Time will tell. I'm into fib 1.6182, even though I don't even know what that means. I hope he's right. <laughs> I hope that does. And then he did this one, XRP Ultimate Money Flow. Um, a similar setup is in progress. Historic, historically, level 32 was the launch pad. Possible breakout to descending trend uh, line. XRP is structurally ready to rock it. I like the sound of that, too. All right. Um, Ashish Birla had put this out in Afghanistan. The central bank is illiquid. So citizens are turning to crypto as a lifeline for international payments. Great reporting. Um, so there you go. I like that too. Now, um, I'm, I'm trying to go somewhat fast through this. Now this came out yesterday after Gary Gensler, um, after Gary Gensler, um, spoke and did his thing in front of Congress and after Congress, threw him nothing but uh, softballs and did absolutely nothing. What a worthless Congress we have. After that, this was floated almost as if they wanted to float it. You know, and when I first saw it, I was like, oh, so he is going to go after Ethereum. And then I slept on it. We'll get to that. But anyway, this was the headline. Of course, he's not suing anybody regarding Ethereum. He's just teasing that we might, you know, he's not suing like he did Ripple and tie Ripple up for two or three years. He's just teasing it. Okay. And teasing it in a very narrow, very narrow way. Ether's new staking model could draw SEC attention. Not, it doesn't say the fact that Ethereum did an ICO and they, and Joseph Lubin disguised the whales and and thought he was telling this to an audience in secret and actually told the audience, I hope this is not being recorded. Gensler's not interested in that. Just this narrow, well, now that they're staking it with Ethereum 2.0, that might catch their attention. Not that there's disguised whales. Not that we don't know who the disguised whales are. That's not a big deal to Gary. Okay, not, that's not something he needs to turn over to DOJ or anything. Now, so that's Red Flag City in itself. John Deaton had retweeted this. He says, God, I hate to be the one to say I told you so, but damn, damn it, some of us have been saying this for 18 months. And yes, John Deaton has, okay? We've been, I mean, th this was, this, Gary Gensler, folks, this is, Gary Gensler is no damn good. This is, this is Gary Gensler against all of crypto. And it always has been. The Bitcoin and Ethereum people just shut, they thought that they were protected for a variety of reasons. The, see, Joseph Lubin and all those guys, they were meeting behind the scenes with the SEC to engineer all that. We've proven that, okay? Maybe they thought because of that, that they could trust these people. If anybody on this planet thinks that you could trust Gary Gensler, Gary Gensler can't be trusted by anybody. This guy, this guy is beholden to people that have nothing to do with honor and integrity or what's good for the country or anything else. So this guy, we've said it before on this channel, this guy would turn on his own mother if he was, if the right, if so-and-so was telling him to do it. I mean, that's who this guy is. That's very obvious by now. So for the Ethereum, the Ethereum guy, I think that maybe you, you could see some of these getting these attention. But here's another red flag for me. The second that this came out, this Peter Van Falkenberg, remember him? He's the guy that Ryan Zagone was on stage with and said proof of work doesn't want doesn't work. He's the ultimate Bitcoin maximalist. But he puts this out about does the merge change how Ethereum is regulated? Almost like he knew that that little Wall Street Journal article was coming. Wall Street Journal article was coming. Almost, now remember, this guy's a Bitcoin maxi all the way. Almost as if he knew that the uh, Gary Gensler article was coming. Now, I had some time to sleep on this, and I said, now that I've had time to sleep on this, I will believe it when I see it. File a suit, Gary Gensler. Tie Ethereum up for two years like you have Ripple. 
Don't just tease it in some narrow way. The Ethereum founders have done far worse than staking, and you know it, face saving. I, I've got a gut feeling on this thing, but that doesn't mean that some of these guys around Ethereum could face some trials. Well, then Jake Chervinsky, he looks like he might be worried. Not legal advice, but the people who actually understand U.S. securities laws will tell you that the merge not only doesn't make Ethereum appear more like a security, but in fact was a significant de-risking event. And I said two words, disguised whales. See, because that little problem is never going away. Now, then you had this from James Flynn. XRP community, the Justice Department is establishing a nationwide digital asset coordinator network to combat the growing threat posed by the illicit use of digital assets to the American public. And I said they can start with those disguised Ethereum whales from the ICO. If you want, that, that's, it's just like when the, Ethereum, the ICO thing was going on in 2017. Why weren't they going after the root? The root, if you pulled out the root, it would have been Ethereum, but they didn't do that. It's almost like they wanted the Ethereum thing to be going so that they could pick off people to sue. A lot of this doesn't make sense. And then at, right in the midst of all of this, folks, Bitcoin flaw has been detected and soon it will be leaked to the public. We all knew one day Bitcoin would end the rise of Bitcoin 2.0. Equals XRP better in every way made to run the global financial system using RippleNet and the XRP token. This will bridge the world's banking sector. And then there was this from Perry Ann Boring. You know, she put the Chamber of Digital Commerce, which she runs, they put out their crypt, they called it the crypto conundrum. And to them, the crypto conundrum is why we can't get the SEC to get a Bitcoin spot ETF. Well, I informed her this morning, wrong. The crypto conundrum is not the lack of a Bitcoin spot ETF. It's the lack of regulatory playing, a lack of a regulatory playing field, level playing field for all digital assets, not just Bitcoin and Ethereum. Our government is intentionally holding back better technology. And then I said, P.S., who are the four, who are the four Satoshis, Perion? Homeland Security knows, Homeland Security knows, do you? I really have a question whether she knows. In fact, I'd bet dimes to donuts she does know. You wouldn't be that passionate about Bitcoin knowing all its flaws unless and, and creating a whole organization around it unless you did know, in my opinion. But listen to this. Does this make any sense to you? Um, a spot Bitcoin ETF would mitigate a lot of these risks in, in a big way. So our report, the crypto conundrum, really outlines you know, why don't we have a, a spot Bitcoin ETF? Because it's truly a conundrum to me why you have calls from policymakers, including the SEC, to have increased investor protections, yet they're blocking one of the most effective ways to give retail investors access to Bitcoin through a regulated product. You might still use proof of work. By the way, folks, that's Peter Van Falkenberg or whatever his name is. And yeah, this, is, right on would like this is Ryan Zagone from Ripple. I mean, on this as well. Ryan, go ahead. Proof of work doesn't work. And proof of work doesn't work. Ryan, 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 proof of work doesn't work. Finish, proof of work doesn't work. Finish, please. And in the early days of Bitcoin, there was a whole group of developers that broke off to create other assets, XRP being one of them, that doesn't use mining, that's cheaper from an energy perspective than Visa, and already scales to 1,500 transactions a second. A lot of these problems have already been solved. The challenge for adoption comes back to policy. The, the policy uncertainty around some of the assets has limited adoption, particularly here in the US. And I'm speaking from Ripple and XRP because we use that, that asset because it's a half a cent per payment. It's basically free. It's, uh, it scales and it's efficient. It's so 1,500 transactions. The second, it no, nearly no energy burn. So we're at a point today where there are real solutions to all of these challenges that already exist. Policy has become the challenge. And we heard on the first panel that around uh, centralization on China, and this is going to be a hard pill for Peter to swallow. But 80% of the mining power for Bitcoin is controlled by six mining pools, five of which are in China. Today, the policy certainty in the U.S. exists for Bitcoin and Ethereum. 
despite the fact those are China controlled platforms. So activity goes to those platforms. What we need to do from a, from a policy perspective in the US is look at the places where there are uncertainty. And when we, one place I'm speaking directly for me here is XRP, where it looks like Bitcoin, it's decentralized, it's open source. We have a small, we have 7% of the validation power on that, rather small in there. Grouping or giving clarity to those ones that are, are very similar to Bitcoin and Ethereum that have the same characteristics and should be classified the same way. And then we're creating a level playing field across all the cryptos. I'm not anti-Bitcoin or anti-Ethereum by any means. I think there's a Neither lot of great are. potential and breakthrough there. But we need to have a level playing field so the market can pick which ones they want to use and not be, as today they are, hindered by regulatory uncertainty. Imagine that. Imagine in the United States of America, the market picking. Well, that's why guys like Gary Gensler are sent, are sent because the people behind them, the people that are propping them up, don't believe in a free market. They believe in having a monopoly for themselves. I think we know who they are at this point. And that's the problem in the United States of America. And that's why, that's why I get up every morning and talk about this, because it pisses me off for the future of my children and the future of this country. That's what motivates me. It didn't used to motivate me here. I, I used to just want to talk, I still just want to talk about crypto, but geez, what in the world's going on in this country? It's sick. Stuart Alderati sh shot some, he fired some missiles off. In today's Senate Banking Committee hearings, Chair Gensler misstated the Supreme Court test to determine what is and isn't a security. Was it intentional or does he really not know the law? Which is worse? Well, if he knows what the law is and he's ignoring the law, that sounds almost criminal, doesn't it? Then John Deaton weighs in. You don't become the youngest partner at Goldman Sachs in history for being unaware. Howie is out. Gary, the Gensler test rules. Because that's what he's doing is he's rewriting the test, folks. He's made, it's the Gensler test now. If, if an entity owns a token and, uh, and others also own that token and somebody somewhere in the world who owns that token hopes to make a profit, all tokens are securities. All right. Here's some interesting news. Ripple sent this out. Keynote announcement. We're thrilled to announce that Jorn Lambert, Chief Digital Officer of MasterCard, will take the stage at this year's Ripple Swell Global. See more of our esteemed speakers here. And then this guy, Cryptomaniac, retweeted that and this older tweet from 2000, January 14th, 2018, from MasterCard News. Proud to announce our partnership with Ripple. Read our blog for upcoming developments with, with and updates on Master Pass. And here's, uh, let me do a refresh. This is Ripple Swell, and this is some of the speakers so far. That guy's the one we just mentioned, Brad Garlinghouse. Derek Walton, look, Bank of America, head of GTS Emerging Payments and Innovation. Let me see if there's any other big companies. Amazon Web Services, look at that. You remember when Kendra Hill said that there, I think she said specifically that, that Amazon early had gotten five billion, I'm assuming an option on five billion XRP. And Amazon, is that pre-allocated XRP to Amazon? That's what she said. Now she said that this is a an announcement that will come in the future. Do you remember that? And for those of you that don't know, Kendra Hill was one of the people in social media, I tell you about every once in a while, that seemed to talk like they knew something and then they disappeared. So um, since I talked about that, maybe on my thumbnail I, I should say, because this oof, this will really get people, Amazon pre-allocated XRP. <laughs> woo, you're not allowed to talk about pre-allocation. If you put that on a thumbnail, woo, that might really get people going. Um, Binance's head of corporate development is going to be there. Um, exchange. This is the exchange.com COO. Uh, let's see anybody else interesting. That's about a lot of people from Ripple there. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that both Bank of America and MasterCard will be at Ripple Swell this year.